Brayden said he won't be able to be here today. Huh? Brayden said he won't be able to be here today. Huh. Therefore, he sent me an email. Yeah. I, I thought he's like so responsible that he sends uh, emails and thinks about the class ahead of time. I thought, I, yeah, he I just announced that the class will start five minutes later. <laughs> he doesn't care. Sure. No, yeah, I, I guess he said that he sent an email like right when class was supposed to start. So um, it's possible that it just didn't show up yet. But. <laughs> Okay, well, those who let's give benefit of the doubt, those who are extremely busy with uh, um, some other homeworks or classes, you will have an opportunity to watch uh, the recordings. But I cannot say that today is the most important day, but it is some un, um, critically important. Day because uh, uh, today we practice democracy. Thanks. So I will give an overview of possible alcohol. I will um, overview once again possible research projects and uh, most wishfully, let me check. That green bar pops up. Yes. yes. I'm just surprised by this 20. Oh, it is time since uh, fall started. Okay. It's not the class time, and it is not time <laughs> that I'm allowed to speak. It would be not possible. So uh, let me overview possible projects, and uh, if uh, more attendees will come up, we will share this thing. And on um, one piece of paper, I would like to hear your choices by the, by the time of the uh, end of today's meeting. And the latest by the beginning of the Wednesday lab. So on Wednesday, we will start doing projects that gives major contribution to your grade. And the success of your class. So uh, <laughs> um, you can just pass it around. So we, huh? Yeah. Okay. We have dual goal today. The most important goal is to uh, help you to create decisions regarding regarding your uh, independent research projects. And on this uh, form, you see that there are some options. Uh, if you're not sure, do not rush. I will show you like 50 more options. And you can write down what you prefer. Like, uh, and if you do not write anything I show, you are very welcome to design your, your own project. Then I will give a brief overview of, uh, of the protocol, how the uh, research is completed. And it, it will be very similar to homework that you have just completed or just tried. And uh, later we will just uh, compose a report on these projects uh, and uh, it will be kind of main thing in the course. Uh, the only difference that in homework everyone does the same. In a research project it is the same uh, operations but for, in, for a specifically chosen model. So that you do not worry about uh, copy pasting from each other. Even if, so if everyone does so different things that you can sit together, communicate, help each other, and it will not damage anything. Ah. Thank you so much. You came at the brain. <laughs> so one piece of paper is for your good members. Another is a black star. I don't know, I just didn't have different color. <laughs> black doesn't mean anything bad. <laughs> Uh, you choose what you would like to do for a uh, research project. Mm -hmm. And uh, first 20 minutes I will entertain you, and uh, last 20 minutes or whatever, uh, we will start a new subject for chapter 4 for excited things. So, uh, some 
of these slides are just copies from previous years, and she's um, some of these projects were done, some were not done. I just list them because there is there is no time to give into details, but you can um, uh, launch your imagination and maybe really say what uh, you want to do. So if you have if you crystals, they often maintain crystalline structure and their electronics uh, properties are boring, just balance and conduction band. But if you want to functionalize their properties, you add surface functionalization in quantum dots. Or one can put just one foreign atom inside and it changes everything. So doping is uh, really cool stuff like uh, uh, gemstones, precious uh, decorative like ruby. It's uh, cheap aluminum oxide with one chromium ion, and then it becomes much more precious. <laughs> Same for fluorescent. Um, combustion and the explosion always it, it does launch imagination and uh, you know there are such uh, compounds that self-ignite in hunter this is especially nice and there, there is an opportunity to just put them together in a simulation cell write molecular dynamics and see how everything breaks up I just like it <laughs> Um, another uh, thing, if you have graphene, graphite, carbon nanotubes, and you etch it with peroxide, it will drill holes or form uh, different functional groups on the surface, like uh, oxidized, epoxy, different things. And it also um, spontaneous flows. States, I'll, I'll tell more later. Um, in any model, there uh, we will look only on uh, static processes, thermalized dynamics, and then static process upon thermalization. But uh, if you like to continue this research after the course, there is an opportunity to uh, explore the changes, dynamic changes during the trajectory in the electronic structure and in the oceans. In the, during the course there is no time for that, but there is a big potential to see uh, uh, interesting research going on. Um, did you hear about Frank Condon factors or Stokes shift? I, I remember emails that some of you were enjoying the word Stokes shift in the whole world. Uh, does this work confuse you? Give me, you don't need to expose you in front of the rest of you can give a little <laughs> sign. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, um, for soft organic molecules, if you fully excite it, it changes geometry drastically and therefore it changes uh, tr uh, transition frequency for objects, right? Therefore, uh, some molecules absorb in blue and emit in red. So lowest transition line for absorption and emission are different. And when we speak about molecules, people use the word Stokes. If you speak about solid state, one can use very different words that will scare any chemist. Stokes shift is not scary for chemists. Uh, but uh, uh, for physics community, same effect can be referred to uh, by name of Juan Luis factor or polar one formation. Because uh, if uh, there is a localized electronic state, it polarizes uh, ions around, they shift. Therefore, geometry for different uh, electronic states of charged state or peroxidic state is different compared to ground state. So it is uh, possible to look in many aspects. And, um, I do not have hope to see Austin, and I still have hope to see Christian, but what they were doing in PCAM1 is, in physics language, it is, can be interpreted as polar information. So they were looking how uh, geometry changes upon excitation. Silicon, array silicon, no. 
Dyson stay solar cells, it, it is a good thing and possible to, to um, pursue. Metal semiconductor, yes. Do you uh, speak, speak about it? Um, Braden is not here, but I think it is something he was uh, looking at. The, if you are exposed in the past or if you to inorganic chemistry, you will see, I, I can replace it, I just uh, quickly skim through. There is a concept of uh, uh, for open shell complexes or transition metals that like to have uncompensated spins, the uh, uh, spin polarized magnetic configurations when they are unpayable. And uh, the preference of metal ion to pair or not to pair it spins on the orbital depends on which molecular groups called ligands are surrounding the, this metal ion. And depending on the ligands, it can uh, uh, give different splitting of the orbitals and it can facilitate forming high spin or low spin configuration. Braden, I, or is it kind of Braden, I'm telling it for you. <laughs> so uh, in, in, in different models, uh, when, during this course, during uh, this research project, one can open this opportunity. And we have all tools to follow it within uh, this, the uh, spin polarized density of states. Interesting method, but boring system. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is what I was offering a couple of years ago, but the list is so long that I'm, I'm I don't have energy to read. I, I will share the notes, and if you want to read, decide. Um, the reason. Notes are not interesting. I'll, I'll let us speak freely. Um, there are many opportunities for combination chemistry can help, not only in the uh, predicting and characterizing properties of standalone static frozen materials, but also dynamics. And uh, dynamics of chemical molecules uh, can be modeled with, uh, with great help to experimental interpretation. But uh, this area of research of standalone chemical molecules colliding into each other is um, in this area there are competitors who uh, explore reaction paths with Gaussian same as Russell told at his number two uh, uh, presentation about a month ago. So if you want to be more realistic and if you want to utilize the full power of the software that we are exploring right now, one can stick together many reactant and product molecules from a box of liquid and or highly dense gas and see multiple reaction paths at the same time. Um, but there is a way, there is an area where um, you, by the skills that you have acquired by now are already Competitive beyond comparison uh, on the on the world scale, scale related to chemical reactions. So, some reactions are slowed down by barriers because to go from one state to another one needs activation energy. But if one adds um, catalyst, the barrier gets smaller, right? And such catalyst can be uh, another molecule of homogeneous catalysis, or it can be heterogeneous. It can be surface or metal cluster or some, something else, so something solid. So when reactant molecules, you're not listening to me, you're reading the list. I just see the trajectory of, of your <laughs> pupils. So um, when reactant molecules are deposited on a, on a cluster, they change their chemical properties completely. And they will react in, in very many cases, much more vividly to each other. And uh, one of the re possible 
research areas with the tools that you have is to look how the molecules deposit to a solid catalyst and then react and then depart. This is uh, almost guarantee of, of success because uh, it works all the time, at least qualitatively correct. <laughs> yes, that's on the surface. Question. So here is the quiz that you do have, and uh, I uh, have seen that you were uh, confidently writing your choices without this. So probably you already know what you're interested in. I'm very happy of it. But you have about 24 hours to really say before you start actual projects. So possible things, many possible projects are on uh, popular material of, uh, of this year, decade, maybe century, perhaps, uh, where you can um, do any dimension, bulk, thin, thin nanowire, or faster. And uh, they are interesting standalone. There you can contribute to the global science by looking how the chemical composition will affect properties. For example, replacing iodine to bromine to chlorine or lead to tin or uh, cesium to something different. Uh, and um, if you are looking on engineering aspect of utilizing these materials for either photovoltaic or uh, light emitting applications, one can uh, inspect interfaces of this material to another material. For example, uh, one of the popular structural motif is to deposit it on, on titanium dioxide surface or interface with titanium dioxide cluster. And to pull uh, holes, it is interfacing with the spirometer molecule or some other um, material that pulls holes out. So it's one opportunity. Another opportunity is to look how these materials emit light uh, if one uh, treat surface by Logan groups or if one does doping. Um, so those are popular research areas that will attract attention if the community and if you are looking on the research trajectory, those are Interesting choices. One of the things that I uh, put at the bottom, if your future career uh, resides in the area of biochemistry, you could be interested in uh, phospholipid biolayers. But phospholipid biolayers itself do not need computational chemistry. They can be modeled by force field. And uh, then uh, all your time spent here is a waste. <laughs> but if you are looking for a uh, living cell interfacing um, inorganic materials, if you are inspecting the toxicity or non-toxicity of um, inorganic materials, this is um, a really beneficial area of research of looking for facilitated uh, by where interfacing either harmless materials like titanium dioxide or water or potentially aggressive materials like uh, perovskite with lead ions that should kill the cell or um, from my previous experience in, in not in major research but in, in the class the hydrogen peroxide is very small molecule but it destroys anything so interface between phospholipid bilayer and peroxide uh, disinfection of human cells is a possible area of research and it can be done. It cannot be done use force field because if you uh, induce bone breaking, but it can be really well done with uh, ab initial molecular dynamics that you know from the um, Yes, so Russell, if you're watching, this is for you. 
Brilliant. If you're watching, it is one of your options. So molecule heating would be metal organic compost. Experience would be metal iron of a cluster as a catalyst, and which enables restructurization of the molecule. Anyone is not happy yet? You know what you want. Yeah. Yes. It's here. Um, so, I'm not showing the actual model here, but it is one of the possibilities. And I'm thinking of one that we are going to draw in this model. In this model. So, one can make interface between the perovskite and the molecule that pulls coal from the excitation. But to have a full cycle and almost complete a solar cell, one needs a material that pulls out. And one can do either all three or do like separate sub chapters. This interface and this interface. Yes. You know, um, there are posters when the character in the poster pointing on the uh, on the person who is watching. You see it? Uh, this index. The tray, the tray is key. Um, Christian, if you <laughs> if, if, if you're watching, this uh, image is for you. So um, an another opportunity is to see how metal organic compounds facilitates reaction. And uh, it is not most efficient uh, reaction, but it is, uh, from an equation uh, point of view, it's uh, one of the most popular uh, metal organic compounds with quartzium and bacterium uh, and most popular mode of water. So if the cluster is if the complex is prepared in the um, excessively cationic state, it becomes chemically aggressive and you perturb water uh, with several steps, converting them into oxygen. And uh, so oxygen will fly out through several steps. And this is needed to um, generate hydrogen and oxygen out of water without contacts, not through electrolysis, but through photoelectrophonics. So this uh, will uh, save self so energy problem for the community. Because for computers, we need power products statically. But if you travel somewhere, you need portable things. OK. And you went to the organic complexes, you need spin polarized uh, tools because they will be unsimilar. Of, uh, different energies and occupations uh, for spin up and spin down components. Um, probably no one will use this here, but it is another opportunity to deposit metal cluster on uh, some substrate and not burn it with uh, molecules. Mm -hmm. This was an intended project for. Our young colleague whose name started with letter A and he is not listening. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, I, from time to time, I'm, I'm uh, check if everything goes well in your directories. This is supposed to be. If you optimize it, it will come much more. And here is an example of uh, oscillating bioware. If you do not know how to build it, do not build it atom by atom. There are tools to um, uh, create it automatically. Because otherwise, it will take uh, a whole month until the end of the course if you try to build it atom by atom. There are like, um, I think it is a little less than 1,000 atoms. So. Too long. The, um, there is a way to create initial geometry over their packed height. And uh, I 
and you effectively share some preliminary geometries that you are very welcome to check uh, interface not with harmless terrain dioxide, which likely will be warm, but with something aggressive that will destroy it. Or if you want to be uh, uh, touch the area of popular science and become popular yourself, maybe interface of liquid by layer with perovskites. Everyone is so crazy whether uh, perovskites with lead will damage us humans. Let's check how dangerous it is. Great. <laughs> uh, if you're not happy with metaorganic complexes, then you will do high reality. And uh, uh, I, I think you are planning to build something like this. Explore just mechanics of collisions of uh, metal and semiconductor clusters, and uh, then explore how the offset of um, field and empty bands on individual subsystems is reflected in the point structure of overall system. And maybe um, uh, if you excite this interface without connection, or maybe even with, with uh, chemical connection, there is a very high opportunity that the lowest excitation of such system will exceed the uh, charge transfer state and form a short loop diagram. It's a direction. How good am I for this time? Well, at least I will uh, complete this so good. And then I had planned to start new material, but I'm not sure there will be a chance for it. Um, this is main thing to complete in the rest of the course. I will come again and again to the past to entertain you with mumbling some new material, but I do not plan to check hard on whether you memorize it or not. Uh, what I plan to focus on and I, uh, what I want to encourage you to do is to choose your research area and uh, explore the material on this person. You're free to design your own research procedure, which is just a starting point, but there is not too much time and you may enjoy it. So let me explain the logic. So right now you are you have done or you are in this stage. Selecting model, building it by drawing or by borrowing from good sources. Right? Then you do optimization of geometry of anything you do. And then you can do things as you did in the last homework. You characterize your model with all available tools. Like checking what is, how does it do anions, cations, whether it absorbs light in the visible or invisible. I mean, UV or IR uh, ranges. Uh, and some interesting properties. So, also, you can plot orbitals and see whether uh, everything is localized or you, uh, it has potential for charge and balance. So then you go one step back here. And you prepare to put it on a thermostat, as you discussed in the lab, heat it, and practice molecular dynamics. Why? Because upon it experience, the model experiences molecular dynamics, some interatomic distances may change, even if there is no chemical. But maybe some chemical reactions will occur. Maybe some uh, bonds will break, or some ligands will be attached or some new bonds will be formed. And then, if you repeat the optimization procedure, optimization. so we do not have much of chemical chemists in the universe. Alyssa is probably, no. Daniel is also this strong chemical background. So in experimental chemistry, you have two, from my view, you have two major steps. Synthesis and characterization. So here is your synthesis, and these blue boxes are your characterization. So upon uh, molecular dynamics, some bonds may break, and if you perform computational characterization, you may see 
corresponds of electronic structure of your model to thermal motion. Especially if you go wild and set up temperature like 2000 Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin, I guarantee you'll see so much changes. If you do that first, if you satisfy your curiosity for many years. <laughs> um, so if, and then you just compare and, and discuss. And it is, uh, it is very simple research protocol, but it, it will help you to learn a lot new about uh, your models. There is a little modification, little uh, alternative, which doesn't change the style, format, and the way how you report your future achievements. This is specifically suggested to Russell and Brady. But anyone else is, is, is welcome to, to, to check. So if instead of heating, you pick up specific group of atoms and assign non-zero moment intention so that a molecule start moving and collide with another molecule or with surface so you set up collision and there you can uh, when you do thermal it means that kinetic energy is redistributed evenly between all evenly and randomly between all atoms but you can intentionally uh, request that one part of the model will move towards another one and set up collision experiment that will also facilitate reactions, facilitate substantial changes in electronic structure, and it, it will be also very interesting to look through and compare. Any questions about research protocol? No? Too much, too, too early. But um, in the homework, you did a lot of exploration for ground state configuration. And probably you tried uh, a nine to ten. So for each of the configuration, you can do molecular dynamics, change the states of um, spectra, and basically, um, if you want to plan your research effort in, in the worst case scenario, in worst case, uh, uh, not in something goes bad, but uh, in the most demanding to your personal time, you can approximately count the number of uh, characterization, numerical characterization experiments, floating gates of state, floating surface spectra, and number of configurations can float. And, uh, it is number of runs that you may want to, to complete. So that you can do one cell per day and then complete like 24 days and then everything is done. Roughly, so that it will be not a big surprise and you do not schedule it for, for the last day for presentation and for uh, written stuff. And uh, as humans, we do not. We will talk and check why it took uh, three hours or longer. Um, unlike wet web, the human effort here should be minimal. You just submit job and go to the pub to relax. Or you submit 24 jobs with the pubs. <laughs> <laughs> and you just wait until, until it completes, and then you sit and quickly uh, visualize results. So most of the time, it's what uh, the um, equipment works, not you. So it, it, sh it shouldn't take much time. OK. Um, It is examples of uh, possible uh, reactions based on uh, what was done in, in previous years. So this one is um, uh, dynamics of um, 
metal organic compost is heavy antenate metal is uh, metal rubens <laughs> and it is uh, facilitated by promoting it to excited states in the same way as we in the lab and then because it is uh, electronically excited it is not stable and as time passes by it breaks bonds and forms some interesting products models uh, laser assisted chemical laser preparation i'm just trying to detain and then it, it uh, facilitates some uh, rich chemistry upon breaking information uh, the pathways absorbed in this model do agree with um, experimental measurements just kind of right to finish the process this is not me and it is not student from previous year. Uh, I just found this uh, video on uh, public YouTube. Uh, so this uh, rocket belt is uh, just filled with peroxide. And when it touches the surface of a uh, catalyst, just silver metal, it decomposes vividly. Oh, it works here. Okay. So uh, this was done uh, in the in this course, and then later resulted in publication. So uh, whether peroxide molecules at the initial were brought in contact and thermalized, uh, thermalized with the silver cluster, and as time passes by, through absorption to the cluster, it uh, forms some uh, intermediates, but then finally it results in uh, uh, oxygen and, and water. And uh, there were no much tricks with electronic structure. You just prepare a model, heat it up, and see what happens. Let's see. Water and sun. So you see the spots and uh, the water molecules, the uh, hydrogen molecules are coming to the destination spots. So this is modeling, you know, in the water in solvent dissociates to hydroxyl group and, and protons. And if there are uh, reactive catalytic sites which are enriched with either positive or negative charge, there can be charge transfer that will facilitate further reactions. Like here, there were protons from solvent deposited to a metal cluster. Cluster was charged with excessive anionic charge with too many electrons. And then these electrons uh, are transferred to protons. Protons become like uh, absorbed neutral hydrogen atoms, which are not happy to stay alone. And then they uh, connect into molecular hydrogen and depart. This was also uh, part uh, of the of this class first year when when it was open. Um. So this is what oxygen to hydrogen. Um, is steam to the water so that uh, one hydrogen from water starts to form molecular uh, hydrogen and the uh, hydroxyl absorbs to silicon surface. So on one hand is contamination of semiconductor and makes it bad for microelectronics. On the other hand it is prototypical uh, formation of hydrogen. I don't know how to reduce the level of sound. If you do not like loud sound, close your ears.
Когда вы говорите «Кунг Вокс», «Де Юз Эстройс», «Де Юз Материал», «Пик Хэллис», «Эйдис Фонтер», «Оффер», 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 «Оффер
sort of if the value has converged, if no, we repeat the whole procedure. Right? Uh, yeah. This respect to implementation style, I, I realized there's two small points that we did not see. I was going away from presentation style to launch uh, the videos. Um, so, two meetings ago, the meeting uh, when I was away and some of us attendees were away too, but I know who they were here, uh, we discussed the uh, how equations of the quantum theory are changed if we do have spin polarized uh, situation. And uh, we discussed explicit uh, forms of functions. So skip it. It's just for uh, that you feel com uh, confident and you know that uh, you always can find the right notations. If we would put a goal to derive and design explicit equations for functional, we would follow the trend in the community and use special notations. It's fine if you agree just with the first one. Rho is dead. But uh, if, you, if you really want to design them, there are several things which you may recognize. So if you remember our first lecture on uh, basic function theory, you remember Thomas Fermi, energy of uh, free electron gas, five thirds, right? Energy proportional to five thirds of the density. Uh, if you remember, well, you shouldn't remember anything else. <laughs> well, momentum at uh, Fermi energy is function density. And there are some additional things. So, this is spin polarization parameter density with polarization. Spin polarization alpha minus density spin polarization beta. And it is normalized so that it, uh, it um, change in the limits from minus one to plus one. This thing is needed if we go away from local density approximation to so called gradient density or generalized gradient approximation. Or this uh, triangle is through a trade for speed. This kinetic energy and all this stuff are used as parameters in expressions for uh, total energies. It is not goal of this class. If you are not looking on the on the screen, you are doing the right thing. You don't need to memorize it. Don't worry. Here is just of the just listen to the question. One of the examples. How the uh, functionals, the real functionals, could help. So, for um, local density approximation, it is just uh, rho in four thirds, is some constants. And then the corrections look, this is this probably one of the simplest corrections. Typically, those are ugly equations for more than one page, but it uses gradient and, and it uses density and uh, by adding uh, such corrections, which are derived using special methods, analytical methods, one can get better and better improvement for total energy. So this is and for density function theory. From now on, you are certified experts in this. Um, so we are not doing actual excited state case today. I'm just giving you general introduction so that uh, you start thinking on the background. This equation is something you can recognize and interpret. Listen. How would you interpret this equation? What does it mean? Do not go to the blackboard. You can you can put uh, Tell it uh, just from, from this. Uh, round 
So the, yes, okay. squares of orbitals, right? Constant orbitals that we obtain. It is what is stored in uh, our charge files. This uh, product, but we use only those orbitals which are occupied, right? So they all each occupied, each orbital that has electrons in it contribute to total density of the whole system. If the orbital is empty, it doesn't contribute to density. And we can agree that we can either run the summation from one to uh, should be smaller or equal to common. So we should run until highest occupied. Right? But in, uh, and then if we run Swing, then there will not be any factors. Add together all orbitals, S, which are function of position. But instead of running summation from 1 to Homo, we can run it from 1 to infinity, but then multiply by a factor, which will be 1 if it is occupied and 0 if it is unoccupied. Or if it is uh, predominantly uh, open shell, it will be 2 because there are two electrons if it is occupied and zero if it is unoccupied. It is what you see in the states file when we do the density trees. So this is distribution function, which tells us whether the orbital number i is occupied or unoccupied. Good? We're going to do this. This is light. <laughs> um, we, we do not use the word light, it's, it's approximation. This uh, approximation is really good, it is correct for ground state. But if we start to shake our system with uh, um, light or by some other perturbation, there is a chance that external perturbation will change occupation of orbitals. And we did it approximately by promoting one electron from homo to lumo, right? This is not the whole story. If we want to be mathematically uh, rigorous, and we want to follow this definition of density, which depends on pair of orbitals, so we should be general and tell that these orbitals can have different indices. There could be contributions from non-coinciding orbitals. And then this factor function should also have the different indices. So if we are in the ground state, this factor function will be, I'm tired of writing equations. I just do one, 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 and zero, zero along diagonal for occupied and nothing for off diagonal. Right? To make it equal to this notation. But as soon as we perturb the system, as, as soon as it goes to non-ground state, and any non-ground state is exciting, there will appear non-zero elements here, there, and there. So it is not the whole story. It is also we we are a little bit more precise than ground state, but um, there is a weather of getting more and more precise. So in this interpretation, excited state can be approximately described by corrections to this factor function that connect orbitals to total density. Make sense? Question about linguistics. If this density it is a continuous density, function of three dimension, but these factors also relate to density, but it is discrete. 
and it has two indices. If you can store it as a matrix, how can you call it? An operator? Yes, a density operator, or if it is density, but it is matrix at the same time. Just merge together two words. Density. No. <laughs> So this is for ground state, right? Square of uh, orbital times the factor, which generally depends on temperature, thermal distribution. And uh, if we go into the perturbed excited states, we can split contributions to total density onto four blocks. It is just convention for convenient, comfortable thing. If we draw it as a, remember, I, I was doing this will be homo. So this block will correspond to index running from one, one to homo, one to homo. And if you correspond to ground state, then you can run index from Lumo to whatever infinity. This is this block, this one is this block, right? And then we do have cross terms when one index runs from one to Homo. And another runs from Homo to infinity. Homo to infinity. So uh, we split the whole density matrix on four blocks, and we can uh, uh, process them separately. So the Part of this matrix is, is responsible for occupied orbitals, for unoccupied and uh, cross orbitals, or, uh, cross uh, products of uh, occupied and unoccupied. Good. Now, in, in ground state, these three are absent. We have only this one. If we perturb our system with electromagnetic radiation, the occupations, the elements, the, the way how far it deviates from zero, will depend on intensity of electromagnetic radiation. The stronger you irradiate, the better it excites, right? But the power in mathematical sense. How the radiation affects this uh, box is different. Here, I'm given the same equation just as a, as a line. So, even at strong electromagnetic radiation, the uh, I, I give indices GG for ground, ground, ground excited, excited, ground, excited, excited. So this. Uh, Excited ground is always smaller than ground component. Ground excited is smaller than ground. And the excited excited is much, much smaller than, than ground. So if, if one uh, sets up a power series, yes, yes, good. So total density upon excitation, and this is not a literal equation, it's more like main concept. So, if your uh, transition dipole times vector field is not very high, small fluctuation, then ground state will experience minimal change. It will be original ground state density minus something negligible. Those cross terms will grow linearly in the strengths of electric field. And the excited occupation will grow as a square of the intensity of the field. So this is 
So if strength of electric field is small, then this is much smaller than this one, and it will be not wrong to drop second order term. Okay? You just do power series expansion and use only zeros term and first order term and drop second order term. Okay. Not surprising. You're okay with this. Okay. So if you agree with this argument, you know what time dependent density functional theory is. So it is, uh, we will go over, over uh, details carefully, but this is the main idea. So it is response of transition density, so this cross part of the density matrix, on to little change of uh, electric field, electric field for uh, electromagnetic radiation at given frequency. So main goal of, there are many, many theories for excited state, but we will start with uh, uh, time dependent density functional theory, which is the simplest and practically most reliable tool uh, for excited states, and some of you, I'm sure, have practiced it already, right? Lisa and Daniel, right? You do practice it every day or every week. <laughs> so, at the end, it gives spectra, but in its uh, core, it computes these two things. Response of the density, transition density to uh, electromagnetic oscillations of small intensity. So how efficiently electrons are promoted from ground to excited. But it doesn't focus on end occupation, it end, uh, focus on transition density. How they are being transferred from here to there, facilitated by optical excitation. I like this slide very much. But we all may get tired. I probably will start from the next time. Let, let me just give heads up. It is explicit way of the big matrix that I showed. So near the uh, diagonal, you have homo, homo, homo minus one, homo minus one. If you continue here, it will be row one, one. And they, they are only the elements that are non-zero in ground state. But if you go to excited state, other elements are getting non-zero as well. And the goal, mathematical goal, is to derive equations which will tell how much these elements will grow if we have external irradiation. No, 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 no. no. So for real, but done, done. Uh, thank you for your commitment. Uh, the biggest favor would be if one day I come and no one will be in the class. <laughs> but thanks for uh, your enthusiasm. And uh, I look forward to see you uh, in lab on Wednesday night. If you know how to pre prepare atomistic models, you can start ahead. Uh, it will be less general instruction for everyone, more personal interaction in class for completing your projects. I don't know how your schedule looks like, but you're very welcome to start uh, going to one day labs and to present with everyone. Um, by the end of the semester. It's, it's, it's your choice, but I, I think it's a good one.